We all know I'm an EVGA fanboy. There's no shock or surprise about that. I've never tried to hide that. When we did the overview of the classified, I was super excited because they brought back a name that they haven't used in quite a while in any of the products. And I said, this is like the pinnacle of what EVGA could possibly come out with for the Z690 chipset. And then that arrived. They did it again. The K70 RGB Pro retains the iconic elements of the award-winning K70 RGB keyboard with a durable aluminum frame, genuine Cherry MX mechanical key switches, and per-key RGB backlighting while setting a new bar for performance with Corsair's Axon technology. Powered by Corsair Axon hyper-processing technology, the K70 RGB Pro processes and transmits your inputs up to eight times faster than conventional gaming keyboards with 8,000 Hz hyper-polling and 4,000 Hz key scanning and up to 20 layers of hardware RGB lighting. To see the complete list of features and updates found in the Corsair K70 RGB Pro keyboard, head to the sponsored link in the description below. So I'm gonna take this, the classified out of the box real quick here so we can kind of do a side-by-side -side comparison because I don't want people to, if you're shopping for a very expensive, very high-end motherboard for chip, the Z690 chipset, then you have to at least consider EVGA. Um, but what I don't want is people to be like, oh, it's just a rebranded because they changed two, a couple of things about it and they just wanted to make more money. No, so Kingpin Edition stuff is built with the direct input of uh, Kingpin himself and um, Tin, I believe, as well. Obviously, Tin is an engineer, and, and those, that duo is why they've come out with some of the fastest products we've ever seen in, in PC. But you have to understand the, the approach of the two different brands. My brands, I mean the brand within EBGA. So classified, is definitely more mainstream. Uh, it's designed to be like the everyday motherboard, but it basically pulls out all the stops. It's got a ton of overclocking capabilities. It's got a ton of expandability. Um, and it's obviously got a, a very high in build quality. Whereas the Kingpin motherboard is built 100% specifically for overclocking. The same thing uh, came about with EVGA once they started building AMD motherboards. You got the dark motherboards and you got the kingpin motherboards as well, which once again are aimed 100% at overclocking. So if I pull the classified board out here real quick, and I wanna, I wanna point something out real quick. The one thing that we can't translate in these videos is weight. Like you can't feel what we feel. The difference in weight between the two boxes is pretty significant as well. The kingpin board is definitely heavier. So this is the classified board right here. Really, I feel like they just, took the dark and then renamed it classified, honestly, which is fine um, to bring back an old name. But if you can see here, we've got a pretty standard layout. You've got this massive VRM cooler at the top and on the side, cooling the chokes, the MOSFETs, and you know, the power delivery of the VRM. You've got two eight pin power plugs up here in the traditional spot on the top, four uh, DDR5 dim slots right here, which obviously is going to be a point of contention with DDR5 regarding, you know, four DIMM and XMP compatibility. But EVJ is always updating their BIOS, just like most motherboard manufacturers, to have the latest uh, in uh, memory compatibility. But you'll notice here right angle connectors and they're recessed. Because this is an EATX motherboard, they need to make sure they have compatibility with, you know, ATX cases and such. So by recessing it, gives it a little bit better compatibility with not you know, overlaying on top of grommets. This is the one thing I wish EVGA didn't do, only because this actually limits, in my opinion, the cases that it will fit in rather than helping. Because when it's pointed up vertically, then you can bring a cable around from somewhere else and plug it in. This means it has to point that direction and that actually is gonna interfere with, with many cases. But in terms of the MOSFET quality, the capacitor quality, um, the, the layout, it's very traditional. Kingpin, however, for the last several generations now, has been very adamant about using a 90 degree rotated socket, which allows them to have, geez, the weight of this thing is insane. We have, we have held some very expensive motherboards in the past, and I think this might be one of the most heaviest ones we've held yet. But, I mean, just look at the cooler on this thing. <laughs> It's like, you thought the classified was, was big in terms of the cooler? That thing is huge. 
Anyway, if you look at this now, you'll see obviously it's a very non-traditional layout. And we've seen this on the dark boards and kingpin boards in the past. So the sockets turn 90 degree, but you'll notice the dim slots here are actually at the top of the board instead of on the side. And the reason for that is, and the fact that there's only two of them is because that is your best compatibility with overclocking. You'll get the best clocks out of your RAM by only having one stick per channel than two sticks per channel. So you can see a major difference already between the classified and the kingpin, the memory support in terms of overclocking and just channel support as it is. But the reason why he rotates it is because of the fact by putting all the power next to each other, you get a shorter, cleaner trace to the socket. Not to mention it looks neater too. You're gonna have both e EPS power right next to the 24 pin, meaning that you know if you, if you wanna cable manage the crap out of it, make it look super pretty, you can do that. In terms of power delivery, we know, and we have showcased and talked about the fact that 12th gen is extremely power hungry. Just letting it boost on its own normal boost algorithm calculations with voltage and all that stuff, will hit 250 watts, no problem, all day long. And if you start to overclock the CPU, that, <laughs> that wattage just, exponentially gets higher, which is why the Kingpin board features a 21 phase power delivery. That's not the highest phase we've seen, but we've seen that on things like Threadripper, and we've seen that on things like the uh, 3175X. 21 phase power delivery with this massive cooler is gonna be, and it's also digital VRM, obviously, just about everything these days is digital VRM. It's still nice to put it on the box. It's a nice marketing you know, piece to put out there, but Everything's pretty much digital VRM these days if it's a, any sort of a mid-range to high-end board. Well, on the back, we've got the same cover. So similar cover, which you see on the classified board. So there it is, there's like kind of this brushed aluminum. So that's gonna help you keep from pinching anything on the back of the motherboard. If you've ever gotten a pinched wire, you know that sort of sucks. Look at the look at the VRMs in there that that cooler is touching. It's just it just looks like if you took the New York City skyscape and made it VRMs. But one thing you gotta keep in mind though, with a with a layout like this, with the memory on the top and then this massive heat sink is your cooler compatibility. Now, if you're running water blocks and stuff, it'll be just fine. If you're gonna be using air coolers like Noctua's and, and big twin tower coolers, which you should be using on a 12th gen, um, you wanna keep in mind that it clears all of this. Usually it will, but we have seen coolers in the past. If you're using an older cooler or something that you're trying to like move forward with your build, you might interfere with this. But this does also have active cooling inside of here. There is a fan inside of here that pulls air through these vents Right here, I think it's actually the exhaust. There's a fan there. It pulls air through this grill right here and will exhaust the air. A couple other things that you get. You get the Probit right up here, which is very similar to what you get on the EVGA um, for the win and Kingpin cards. This allows you to plug in the harness that comes in the box, which then gives you probes that you can hook up the multimeter to so you can actually um, check the voltages anywhere on the board that is supported through this Probit. So you can see hardware voltage for the core and all that. So you don't have to rely on software, which will have variance between what the actual voltage is and what the software readings are. So you, if you're gonna be going for extreme overclocking records and stuff, this board is designed for that. You've got a three BIOS switch right here. I've talked about this before recently in our, in our video about uh, graphics cards and motherboards having multi BIOS switches right here. So you could have like an LN2, you can have like a overclocking and you have just a standard, different fan curves, the whole deal. So you can switch those. These toggle switches right here are kind of nice as well. These will allow you to turn on and off different PCIe lanes as well, so that if you want to turn on and off the M.2s or the PCI Express slots themselves, you can do that. And that's another thing that you would do specifically with extreme overclocking like LN2 and all that. If you weren't using any of these other lanes, you would physically disconnect them from the CPU, which is what that toggle switch does. Dual readout right here, so you can see exactly what's happening with your system that exists on a classified as well. So they actually put a USB-A like physical dongle slot right there, slot so you could just put your USB stick on there if you have to do some sort of a BIOS flashback. The one thing I still wish they'd get rid of is the yellow capacitors. You know, for whatever reason, I'm, I'm sure, I think this exact capacitor for some reason, Kingpin's team just absolutely swears by, which is why they continue to use them. I just wish the company that they source them from would make them in black. Cause that, this is like such a perfect blacked out board except for the gold accents that you see. Um, Kingpin loves the gold accents. His Kingpin cards come with gold accents. His motherboards, the dark boards have always had gold accents. You'll notice here on the classified board, it's a little bit of a red accent there, and then there's no gold traces anywhere on the motherboard. U.2 right there, you've got a ton of SATA ports on here if you need them. And then we've got our that USB, and then 
they give you these little covers, which is kind of neat. So if you're not using any of these plugs, they're not gonna be sitting there looking all ugly. So you've got another PCI Express slot right there. You've got some additional um, ARGB and 12 volt RGB headers right there. And then I believe that's our, yeah, that's our HD audio, which is awesome because no one should be using HD audio on there. Little things like this that make a board, um, it's obvious that it was designed by an enthusiast, right? For enthusiasts. This is our front panel connectors and stuff. And they give you a cover for this because a lot of people will be using a board like this in a test bench type scenario where they're not gonna have it necessarily in a case, which is why every single Kingpin motherboard also comes with this standoff PCB, which is funny because it's actually made from, theoretically, one of the PCBs, like it's PCB material. It doesn't have the holes and stuff drilled in there for all the traces, but this and then all the standoffs that come in it in here, there's the pro bit right there, by the way. Biggest antenna ever for their wireless, I swear. But you get these standoffs that you can screw into this and then it gives you something to actually take the board and mount it to. That way um, it's off of the surface. If you have any sort of a heater on the back here, if you're doing any LN2 cooling on the CPU socket, usually there's a heater you put on the back right here to keep it from freezing. That will allow you to be able to use it in a test, best, test bench type scenario. So I absolutely positively would be using this in my personal rig and pivoting and changing the board out if it wasn't for these 90 degree connectors. It's kind of, it's kind of sad too because the power board built into the Spectre 3 on the case that I'm using even accounts for top mounted EPS or EPS next to the 24 pin. So I would have these really short, awesome cables but because of the fact that when you do a 90 degree like this, the 24 pin is technically flipped the other direction, the cables that I have won't work with it. Now, if I use their 90 degree adapter that they have, then I got a 90 degree adapter coming out and then coming up and then the cable sticks way high and makes a, another loop back, which just in my opinion, doesn't look very good. So, although just about every single one of my personal builds in the past with Skunk Works renditions had EVGA motherboards, I still continue to not be able to use them in my personal rig with the choice I made on case, simply because of the, the 90 degree, or technically these are 180 degree plugs right here. One other thing to point out, and we'll, do, well, I'll grab my iFixit kit real quick, is the M.2 location, just like on the classified, is right underneath the dark logo right here, and you've got three of them side by side. So one thing I forgot to mention too, is the PCI Express slots on this motherboard are PCIe Gen 5. However, we're Gen 4 on the M.2s, and I suspect that is because of the fact that the Gen 5 M.2 spec doesn't exist yet. So maybe someone can sound off in the comments down below uh, if that's why these are Gen 4. But anyway, the fact that you have three of them right next to each other, I love that because, granted, your graphics card will cover this up, and this will really suck if you have like a hardline tubed, water-cooled graphics card or something on here if you want to get to your drives because you'll have to pull that out of the way. But I don't like when you have like one here and then another cover with one here and then like another one over here. It's like, I hate when they're spread out all over the board. So the reason why, you know, EVGA and Kingpin have done this, and by the way, this massive heat sink right here, it's actually a heat sink with heat sink shape. So any airflow over that will give really good cooling to the um, SSDs. I hate when they're spread out all over the board, but this is because of about trace length and just crosstalk and, and being a, an efficient board design. And then when you touch any of the materials, you can tell like it is absolutely like a spared no expense type of motherboard construction, which is why, you know, the price of the, uh, the Kingpin and dark stuff is um, not for the faint of heart. But history has shown that you do get what you pay for with the uh, Kingpin name. I mean, just go look at the uh, Port Royal leaderboards right now, man. I, just, I let the professionals do it now, I don't even try. The amateurs have had their fun, the professionals are back at it. So anyway, there's an unboxing and first look at the dark board, the Kingpin Edition dark board. So if you compare it to the classified, you can see it's like classified on steroids. And most of that comes from like this section right here is realistically where the difference is between a classified and a Kingpin. So anyway, World record overclocks probably incoming with this motherboard just in time for new platforms to come out in the future. What I'm kind of excited for though is the AM5 stuff. If they're already doing this for Z690, you know, and with AVGA now building X570 boards and the X570 dark board, which I actually put in Kia Pia's computer, if you remember that, I put an EVGA dark motherboard in there. 
extreme overkill for what she needed, but you know, I wanted to, I wanted to make that PC as, as badass as possible. You know they're gonna have an AM5 Dark, whatever that X670 or whatever they're gonna call it. So, whatever. All right guys, sign off down below. Would you buy this chunk of metal known as a motherboard? Uh, or is this just a little bit too rich for your blood? I mean, motherboard prices, man, I feel like just three, four years ago, a $250 motherboard was considered expensive. Now we've got like the, the starting range for some like ROG and EVGA boards are like $600. And that's like the starting point for the, for the higher end boards. And they go all the way up to like, well, I think, is it ASRock that has a $2,500 motherboard? Whatever. It's getting kind of crazy out there. Sign off below uh, what you look for in a motherboard and if you'd even consider something like in this tier and category. Thanks for watching guys. I know the videos right now have been kind of lackluster-ish, but this is kind of like the calm before the storm because we're getting ready to have like the second half of this year be just a complete gauntlet of new hardware, new graphics cards from both AMD and NVIDIA, new CPUs from Intel, new CPUs from AMD, which is gonna be new platforms. It's gonna be a complete cluster and it's gonna be great. So, all right guys, we'll see you later.